Hey guys, it's Will Patterson here again, and here's a new tutorial on Illustrator. Now this is for beginners, and this is coming from the first tutorial, Illustrator CS6 um, number one, and we're going to move on to Illustrator CS, sorry, it's Illustrator CC um, part two, and this is um, a few part series that we're doing on the basics of Illustrator. Today I wanted to talk more about color swatches uh, and the gist of the color swatches. Basically, what we have here is the artboard, and we're going to go create a shape in here, the rectangle, let's just press that, and I'm going to create a square by holding shift to constrain the angles, and then I'm going to make sure that my uh, box is highlighted, and press vertical and horizontal select, uh, align tools, by highlighting it I'm going up here, making sure it's aligned to the artboard. Now this is the um, square that we've just made and you can see there's a color in it and there's a stroke on the outside. You probably won't be able to see the stroke so I'm going to highlight it and go to my stroke weight and bring it up so you can see it. So now I've got a brown stroke. I'm even going to just change the color to a black. And there you go, there's my brown stroke with a red fill. Now I want to talk to you about down here. Down here we, it seems like in Photoshop we have a foreground and a background color. We don't really. It's actually a swatch. Sorry, it's actually two swatches for the stroke and the fill. Illustrator works differently. You basically get strokes and we use them a lot within Illustrator. So they've put them down here. Now this fill, as you can see, is red and the stroke, as you can see, is black. Now, depending on which color uh, swatch or shall I say fill swatch is above, uh, means that's one that you're going to work on if you're using any of these colors here. If you don't see the swatches panel here, which is basically just a group of colors that you can create using CMYK, then you go up to a window and go down to swatches down here. And then this little window will pop up and you can see. Basically these swatches are used to make it easier for people uh, to select colors and to keep colors. You do have them within Photoshop as well. I've just come into Photoshop and 6 here. And you do have them within Photoshop as well if you just go down here. And you can create swatches. Basically you can create these swatches and um, this is an RGB swatch. But in Illustrator, if we go back, you'll see that if we highlight this and go to a red, you'll see that when we double click on the swatch, that they're made up of this weird code or weird sort of value system of percentages and CMYK. Now CMYK is a printing color mode that uh, printers use. So you need to be able to use this when you're printing stuff. Now the swatch name is actually CMYK red because that is the uh, proper red of CMYK or should I say Pantone red of uh, CMYK. Now what CMYK actually stands for in these values is this. Cyan for C, magenta for M, yellow for yellow, or so I should say Y for yellow, and then key for dark grey. Now it's not black, you might think it is black, so if I bring this all down here you'll see like a proper dark red. It's not actually black, it's a really dark grey. To get a full black with an illustrator, you need to change these color values to 50, 50, 50, and then 100, which makes 250 altogether, 250%, which is the amount of ink that you can have on a paper without it getting wet or too wet uh, and looking all smudgy. And that's how you create the black. So right now you can see that this black here isn't actually black at all, it's just really that gray. So to change that, we're gonna go and press 50, 50, 50. Oops, I did that too quick and then 100 to get the black. And then I'm going to change this even more by pressing global process to spot color. And then press, sorry, I'll just press black one to change the name. And that is a global process color. Now, if I wanted to change uh, the color mode that I'm using, I can just double click on the swatch, go to color mode, and I can choose from any of these. So you might be uh, able to use HSB or RGB uh, if you're more used to them. Basically, you can see on the swatch, we have a black stroke around it and a fill on the inside. Now, the cool thing about Illustrator is if I were to delete any of this square, then the stroke would wrap around it still because it's vector artwork. So I'm going to press L to bring up my ellipse, um, my ellipse tool. And I'm going to go create a square, sorry, a circle. I'm going to just make sure this is horizontally aligned. And I'm going to highlight both of these and go to my Pathfinder function down here. Now Pathfinder I talked about in my last video, but if you don't know where it is, it's in Window, and then go down to Pathfinder, and then that'll be it. Basically this is where we use to cut and manipulate shapes. 
So if I wanted to cut uh, this circle out of this square, I would highlight them both and then go to minus front, which is the second one in, which would cut the circle out of the square. And you'll see that the stroke is carried on within that. And then also, what I can do is I can press A and then highlight a certain um, anchor point like so and bring it down. And you'll see that you can manipulate these shapes to whatever you want. Even so, if you wanted more anchor points on this shape, uh, which an, an anchor point is basically a point of which a, a point of manipulation, and you see them uh, within a path. Now, a path or a, a bezier path is something that's used with a pen tool. I've just clicked P to get my pen tool out, and basically with these paths, you can create shapes. And you're seeing here a shape that I'm creating that's awful, but you can see I'm creating it, and there's a shape. That's one close shape. A way that I get used to uh, path drawings is I get a, a letter out. I then put a new layer on top of it over here. Hi hide that layer. Get my pen tool out and I start drawing around it like so. And then what this does is this gets you to understand more about the pen tool. And to that, we have another exact same T. Basically, in this tutorial, I didn't show you many uh, solid things, but I wanted to give you sort of a look at the other things within this uh, software. Adobe Illustrator CC has got uh, loads of things packed into it, loads of functionalities packed into it and stuff like that. It's great fun to use. So make sure that when you're next on Adobe's website, go and use that or go and have a look at it. I'm going to just go and delete this first layer. So getting back to my shape, you can see here I've got a dark grey and then if I change it to black, there's black. I'm going to horizontally align this. So you can see here that shapes in the Illustrator uh, are very easily manipulated um, with the tools that are there. I can easily manipulate this by adding an anchor point by pressing plus, which would give me another point of manipulation. And that's added an anchor point. So if I press A to get my direct selection tool, I can highlight this and bring it right down and create some awesome shapes like so, which makes it proper easy to make. So in the next tutorial, we'll be going more into the um, sort of jam pack side of it. Uh, basically, this is where I'll be showing you more detailed versions of things. If you want, you can actually support me over Patreon. Uh, you can give one dollar to me for every video uh, and that would really help me out giving a dollar per video and that means that you guys will be getting more incited footage on patreon that you can only see if you're paying a dollar in the future more videos will be coming out thank you so much for watching go and check out my website it's been it's me will patterson i'll catch you later